Starbucks is being called out for attempting to crush a unionization drive um, by firing several workers. So now this happened in Memphis. Uh, in fact, Nikki Taylor, a former shift supervisor at the Poplar and Highland store in Memphis, uh, posted this on Twitter saying that I was fired by Starbucks today for policies that I've never even heard of before and that I've never been written up before. Now, Taylor uh, was one of the ones that were leading a unionization drive um, that was actually uh, created uh, on January 17th. So that's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And it's actually uh, in support of, in, in reflects Martin Luther King Jr. striking with the sanitation workers to once again, create a union uh, before he was assassinated. Now, um, <clears throat> Taylor added that they're not just firing her. They're firing the entire committee. This is a clear attempt by Starbucks to retaliate against those of us who were leading the union effort at our store and to scare other partners. Starbucks will not get away with this. The entire country will be outraged. Now, as I mentioned, she's not the only one that was fired, Beto Sanchez, another shift supervisor at the store, said that Starbucks has been fighting desperately to silence us because we did not back down or let them shake us. Now, a Starbucks representative, however, told the New York Times, quote, that the workers were fired for violations, including allowing at least one reporter inside the store to conduct an after hours interview in which some of the employees were not masked. Oh, see, you didn't have a mask on, you're fired. Wow, really? Now, I think it's pretty obvious the ones that they picked out were the ones that were leading the union drive. So now, according to a former manager who had worked at that very store, uh, and her name is Amy Holden. So she pointed out that terminating employees for these kinds of policy violations is incredibly rare. Take a look. We do not move straight to termination for anything that is not considered egregious, like stealing and harassment and those kinds of things. Those things we would move towards corrective action to as long as partner resources supported it. The majority of a violation, a policy violation, would move to some level of corrective action where we would assume positive intent and help that partner correct their action rather than moving straight to termination. It's very rare that we move straight to termination for some sort of policy violation. These partners were terminated for policies like going behind the line when they were off the clock. It's something that's done across the company and especially in the Memphis area. They went behind the line for various reasons, but if we terminated everybody that did that, we would not have a staff. Many of those partners have done those things directly in front of the district manager and the new store manager, and they've never been coached on it before. Nothing was ever said about it. So they were terminated for going behind the line, which is a violation of policy. They should not be doing that, but it's not something that we would terminate a partner for, especially for the first time of them doing it. We would want to have a conversation with them and make sure they were aware of the policy. All right. So again, she explained it there. They don't normally fire people for this, but it just so happens to people that were trying to organize a workers union at that specific Starbucks. Hmm, very, very strange. Uh, but we've seen this before. Look, anybody who's worked basically anywhere knows that people violate certain company policies all the time. It's usually little dumb things, right? Yes, they're technically on the books, but nobody follows it. <laughs> nobody follows it. Uh, I mean, look, I, let me give an example. The shop that I worked at uh, that was plastic injection molding. We're supposed to wear the side shields with our safety glasses. Nobody did that. <laughs> nobody. Uh, you know, uh, only, uh, oh, there was an exception, of course, only when OSHA showed up. Then they're like, oh, you better get your safety glasses on. Mm, you better get your safety on. Nobody follows these things. Nobody. And normally, nobody cares. But if you try to start a union, well, then suddenly, oh, you see, it's on the books. We're going to have to let you go. Union busting 101. Very, uh, you know, dirty, dirty tactic that bosses will absolutely use it against you. But it helps to get them uh, to, you know, to get rid of organizers. 
So now, of course, uh, Starbucks Workers United, that represents the company uh, that are trying to unionize at various locations, um, they they said in this this situation was the most blatant act of union busting yet and claimed retaliation against union organizing committees at that Poplar and Highland store. And that's, again, after they allowed the media to conduct an interview in the store after hours. Now, the group added that Starbucks is using those policies that have never been enforced before, such as going behind a counter when a partner is not officially working. To fire workers, Starbucks chose to selectively enforce those policies. They have not previously been consistently enforced as a subterfuge to fire union leaders. Many of these workers did not have any prior offenses or write-ups. And by the way, there's a longer video to that um, where Amy breaks it down, all the different things. It's a five-minute video. I'll have the link in the description. You should watch all of it as she details why each and every person that was fired was fired and why the policies that they were being fired for, the violations, were just garbage, bullshit. Um, and so it's a really good breakdown. But that said, Starbucks workers, uh, they're, the Starbucks workers united say that as a result of this, they're going to file charges against the company uh, at the National Labor Relations Board. Now, if they take this to the NLRB and they actually win, well, this wouldn't be the first time. Last year, an, NL, uh, an NLRB administrative judge found Starbucks had illegally retaliated against two baristas at a Philadelphia spa, Starbucks who tried to unionize. According to the judge, Andrew Gollin, they found that Starbucks closely monitored their public social media activity, attempted to gauge employees' support for the employer's, employees' efforts, and unlawfully spied on protected conversations one of the employees initiated with their coworkers. The agency added that Gollin concluded Starbucks retaliated against the employees and discharged them in an attempt to quell the organizing drive. Now, in this case, the Poplar and Highland workers, again, chose Martin Luther King Jr. Day to launch that drive and are demanding higher pay, including a minimum wage of at least 15 bucks an hour, better working conditions, and improved COVID-19 safety precautions. So now, none of that, none of that is controversial at all. None, none of that is anything that Starbucks can't provide and should have already been providing. Uh, I mean, again, Starbucks is massively profitable. Now, in case you're screaming, but Jeff, you don't understand. They're going to raise their prices. They're going to raise their prices. But they already have raised their prices. <laughs> uh, in fact, according to executives, the company had actually already raised prices twice this year. October and then, I'm sorry, once this year and once last year. October and in January. And by the way, they have additional price increases uh, planned throughout the rest of 2022. That's despite generating about $8.1 billion in revenue in the most recent quarter. And actually also had their uh, recent profit margins increased by 31%. And was able to, at the same time, give their CEO a 39% raise to just over $20 million. Record profits, record revenue, record CEO pay, huh? and yet they're crushing unions. No, no, we, we, we can't pay our workers. We can allow them to have a union. And we have to raise their prices again. Bullshit. This is just another example of corporate greed and union busting.